If you're wondering what's the difference between solumedrol versus solucortef, or how to open the vial, also known as active vial, look no further. In this video, I'm gonna cover all of that and more. By the way, my name is Christina, nurse practitioner. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I provide educational nursing content on a weekly basis. If that sounds like something you're into, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. When you're looking at corticosteroids, think of it as a level of tiers. There are different strains used to treat for different diagnoses that can be given as oral, IV, IM, topicals, intranasal, ophthalmic, or as nebulizers through inhalation. So in this setting, we'll be focusing on IV route, but two things solucortif and solumedrol have in common is both of these drugs are a steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and are short-acting drugs with different half-life spans. However, differ slightly in dosage mechanism of action and its ability to treat inflammation versus versus swelling. So you have your solucortep, also known as hydrocortisone. The demo dose I have here is 100 milligrams IV. This drug is less potent than solumedrol, but has a higher mineral corticoid potency activity, which is two times more higher than solumedrol, which means it retains more sodium and water retention. So this medication, solucortef, would be ideal for your sepsis patient because in the setting of sepsis, your patient is hemodynamically unstable, blood pressure is on the lower range. So if you have more mineral corticoid activity, you'll have more sodium and water retention. Hence, that will increase your plasma volume to help maintain your blood pressure. As opposed to your solumedrol, also known as methylprednisone, this is dosed at 125 milligrams given IV. This drug is more potent than solucortef and can be treated for asthma or COPD exacerbations and many other illnesses. So solumedrol has less sodium and water retention as opposed to solucortef. Another example of a long-acting corticosteroid is dexamethasone that has no sodium or water retention and is given in the setting of like bacterial meningitis because this is where swelling of the brain occurs so you don't want to give a corticosteroid that has a higher level of sodium and water retention because you don't want no more swelling okay moving on to the skills demo be sure to do your hand hygiene and verify your six rights right patient right medication right dose right time right route and right documentation and be sure to gather your supplies this will consist of your medication being administered your 3cc syringe with a needle alcohol prep and a pair of gloves. You'll notice in the container on the bottom of the vial, it has dry powdered corticosteroid medication. In the middle, it has a rubber stopper and on the top it has a sterile water. Also be sure to verify expiration date and that it is not expired. With your dominant hand, you will hold the vial and your non-dominant hand will grasp the bottom of the vial with your thumb and top of the vial with your index finger and push together so both the powder and the solution mix together and gently swirl for three to five seconds to let dissolve. Then if you look at the top of the vial, it has a red tab in the center where you will flip the cap off and clean the top with an alcohol prep. We will be removing two mils of medication, so I will draw up two mils of air that will be injected into the vial. I will insert the needle into the center target and inject the air and invert the vial upside down and bring the bevel of the needle closest to the bottom and withdraw two mils of medication. I will then withdraw the needle and dispose of it in a sharps container and administer per MD order. All right, that sums up my spiel on corticosteroids. Be sure to check out one of my other nursing videos. And if you appreciate the content, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you, my friend, on the next one. Take care.